Okay, let's start. Um, so thank you. I, I hope uh, your brain is not uh, already uh, overridden with too much information. So that's why I choose to speak about Web3, a very, very simple subject. Uh, and uh, maybe to speak about uh, such a wide domain, uh, the, the, the posture I, I decided to take is to, to, look it, to look at it from an architecture point of view. Because uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm an architect, I'm Raphael. Uh, I also uh, have some few expertise on the open source. I work uh, in TNO, GRS, uh, Tech Squad. Uh, yes, I also have uh, some uh, Rafiki is my nickname because I do yoga, but not the subject for now. Uh, what is the objective of this presentation is uh, to give you some milestones about what is Web3 because uh, it's a wide and very complex and very moving uh, domain. There's a lot of buzzwords, a lot of polemics, uh, and it's uh, not easy to navigate. So that's why I, I decided to draw a map for myself first when I first discovered this uh, this subject. And basically, this presentation is the presentation I would have had, I would have liked to have when I started, because uh, it's kind of crazy uh, the Web3 ecosystem, as uh, you might uh, see. Uh, and important disclaimer: I'm not here to sell uh, Web3 and Web3 and Web3 usages. Okay, because as soon as you speak about blockchain, NFT, crypto, that kind of stuff, uh, the first reaction you have is, uh, what's the purpose? What do you do? What's new? Uh, it will burn the planet down, that kind of stuff, which might be valid. That's not the subject, but then it prevents you to understand what it is. So my, my, uh, what I, I propose to you is to try to go through with, from an architecture point of view, through what is uh, the web tree. Already broke one mic okay <laughs> that's <laughs> okay so uh, bear with me uh, it's just the basics and then if you don't know uh, web3 or you learn some new stuff then you can make your own mind about uh, what uh, web3 usage could be all right so why uh, this uh, word web3 first so basically i was born uh, uh, in 73 so basically at the same time of uh, the early premises of internet ARPANET, that kind of stuff, military, then university. And then in the 90s, when I was a student in university, I discovered uh, the web, internet first, uh, Gopher, that kind of stuff for people who remember that kind of protocol. And then uh, HTML and the web. And uh, I, I was amazed and I said, oh, that's going to change the world. I want to, to work on that kind of stuff, you know, networks. So I have a, a degree in uh, telecommunication, networking, that kind of stuff because of that, because of Internet. All right. And at that time, uh, pages like web pages, but information basically on the Internet were static, not synchronous. And uh, basically, you were reading some uh, inst institutional uh, information that was pushed down to the, the client. All right, so we can speak about information and economy. And uh, uh, in the, the, the years 2000, uh, emerged the uh, social web and the central platforms. Uh, so usages, business, uh, and creation of a central platform who uh, concentrate all the data from the users. Uh, and we speak about uh, dynamic, interactive, read and write. So like a blog post, I can write things, I can uh, uh, produce content. But basically, they are centralized on the platform that uh, will uh, uh, make you pay. But uh, if you don't pay with money, you pay with uh, your data. So you're the product, basically. And uh, now we speak about Web3. That's why ret retrospectively we speak about then when to Web2 and Web3. Uh, and Web1, sorry. Web3 is about uh, how to uh, re-decentralize uh, things. Uh, so reaction to the centralization of Web2. And uh, it's based on uh, blockchain that we will uh, visit a little bit. And the notion of token. Uh, uh, and we will visit uh, that concept also uh, uh, to build an economy on top or around uh, the notion of token. Another way of putting it, because uh, as you saw, uh, we speak about Web3, but basically you will see through the presentation, I don't know why it's called Web3, 
basically, because it has a lot of things to do with uh, the internet, but not so much with the web itself. Uh, so we could speak about Internet 1, Internet 2, and Internet 3 at the end of the day. And uh, yes, in a geeky way, uh, another, another way, but it's just the same thing that I just presented uh, to you, is uh, we had the first era uh, uh, decentralization of the in infrastructure, and that's how we, we like collectively uh, build the internet, the international worldwide infrastructure on top of this uh, infrastructure. Then uh, we assisted, uh, for me, it, it was a kind of uh, a sad story going on, the uh, centralization of uh, rules and value because they were uh, captured by a central platform. So the rules are made by, uh, by those, uh, those platforms. I won't name any, you, you, you know many of them, right? So it's the rise of social and business platforms. And uh, the decentralization is uh, the, the, what is at stake for me for the next iteration, maybe maybe of the internet, is how to re-decentralize things and to, uh, to, to put the rules and the value of uh, what is uh, exchanged and uh, stored on the internet at protocol level, just as uh, we, we started when we created the internet. So it was, that's why I call it return of the protocols, right? So speaking about protocols, uh, just uh, a few elements, I won't say history, but of uh, a few dates, so the creation uh, and uh, of this movement, uh, the, the starting point is, uh, is the years uh, right after, you know, the economic breakdown and the, the bank, uh, some of the bank going on bankruptcy and, uh, and things like that. And the apparition of the, the, the Bitcoin, so the first uh, crypto money. Uh, made supposedly by uh, uh, suppose uh, Satoshi, uh, maybe one guy, several guys, we don't really know. Uh, it doesn't really matter at, at this stage. Uh, it's important to understand why it emerged at that time. As I said, it was a reaction to the economic crisis and they said we don't want any more uh, central body uh, managing and centralizing all the transactions and the rules on the money transfer. So that's wh why uh, the, the crypto money, the first one, Bitcoin, was created. Then, in the 2013 and for three or a few years after, the, after this date, something very important to emerge is the separation of the concept of a blockchain from the Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin was based on the blockchain. It was one and single thing that separated the two concepts. Uh, and basically, the blockchain is the platform on which uh, a crypto money, in this case Bitcoin, is uh, implemented, uh, implemented and is running. We'll go into the detail of uh, how it uh, how it is done, and uh, the apparition of the first program programmable uh, blockchain, which which is called Ethereum. Okay, and started uh, in the 70s, in the in the, mm. uh, seven, we are to, to 2017. Then we we observed explain uh, explosion, complete craziness about uh, crypto monies, and then new concept like NFTs and uh, a lot of noise and a lot of uh, uh, news and polemics and uh, scams, uh, and then it started to to draw the attention of a lot of people. Okay. Uh, before maybe diving into uh, the Web3, just a few words, but I'll go, there's a lot of words in, on this slide. Uh, maybe it's for, for further reading. It's just to, to clarify the, the, the links and relationship between uh, Web3 and Metaverse. It's not the same. Okay. Uh, first, uh, we shouldn't say, to my eyes at least, the Metaverse. There are several Metaverses. What are they? Immersive 3D virtual worlds. So using... Uh, uh, for example, VR, AR, or even artificial intelligence now. Uh, and basically, it's interactive uh, world, like social uh, platform or gaming world, where uh, users uh, represented by avatars can, uh, can uh, have uh, interaction and uh, exchange assets, digital assets. Uh, and the difference with the internet is we use the internet, it's a tool, and we live in a, in a metaverse, that's a space, that's a world, but we have interaction. Okay, so it's very social. Um, some examples, Sandbox, uh, Decentraland, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, what is important is the link with, uh, between uh, Web3 and the uh, metaverse. Web3, for me, is a possible, and I, again, and fast is possible evolution of internet governance. So how it is governed, how do we manage data, how do we, do we ensure privacy, that kind of stuff. Metaverse is an evolution 
possible also of internet usage because we live in the in the metaverse but basically they need or they at, at, at least now they use some of the web3 protocol to manage the users uh, and the assets uh, interaction so the exchange between the, uh, the users and their assets uh, and if we if we should say the metaverse for me it should be called the multiverse because it's an interaction of the of several metaverses actually it's just like the internet or maybe inter metaverse which is very ugly but you you, you have the idea you know it's interconnecting several spaces between themselves and uh, there are already some uh, uh, project uh, working on interoperability between those uh, those spaces like uh, metalink metaverse standard forums or multiverse uh, nft for instance but now let's focus now on web3 since uh, i I delimited the, the perimeter of my uh, of my uh, my deep dive, let's say. Uh, and as I said, I'm an architect. So when I discovered this uh, this crazy world, and, uh, I'm amazing uh, and crazy world of uh, Web3. Uh, I got a little bit dizzy. I said, but the, the, I, I I don't understand anything. Everybody is uh, is using some acronyms, and every day there is a new technology, and the the the, the one for the last week is al already outdated. Uh, I mean that's crazy. I can't follow. I don't understand anything. So uh, I took uh, I took uh, what uh, I took the pressure that I, that I used to have uh, when I when I work on as architect is okay. Let's draw a draw a map and try to understand what is going on. So for me. Uh, a good way to, to see and to, to observe the Web3 is to divide it into layers uh, that are built on top of them. So remember, protocols, layers, uh, OSI model for, for those who know. Um, and th those are the four layers that I propose to, to, to describe. The idea is to introduce some key elements of the each layer. In, in 30 minutes less now, it's a kind of a challenge. But the idea for you, uh, for me, I'll be happy if you remember just a few things about each layers. What are the concepts behind that? Okay. So we see a de uh, decentralized infrastructure and then application, and then on top of that, uh, Web2 application. Because uh, spoiler alert, uh, Web3 uh, does not replace Web2. Okay, we still need the uh, interaction with uh, end users and UI, and there is this uh, interface and access point layer in between the two worlds. So from now, what I propose is to go through each layer. So you have this. Uh, you told me it was. Yeah, this uh, little map uh, for you not to be too too too, too lost uh, in my in my presentation. Uh, so we're in the infrastructure layer, decentralized infrastructure, and in this layer I have several sub layers. So the first one is really the decentralized technologies, and basically as any uh, uh, IT platform, it's uh, breakdowns at the end of the day in three different stuff, which is the networking, the compute, and storage, just like in cloud, just like we used to to do before. Cloud. Out. All right. So networking is about peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, protocols and peer-to-peer well-known uh, implementation. So I put some some logos here for you. If you heard about it, or if you hear tomorrow about them, you can replace it on my map. But basically, I won't uh, I won't go into the details of each uh, protocols or each project or each uh, each uh, initiative. The idea for you just to understand what are the the, the structuring principles. So for the comp let's start with uh, continue with storage. Storage is uh, how to store information uh, in a decentralized way. Uh, so you have a kind of distributed uh, file system like IPFS or another one that is called Swarm. You have many uh, other implementations. The idea is how to store on a, on a network of uh, connected nodes some information in a way that is decentralized. So there is no uh, central body or entity that can decide that uh, we have to delete this information or change it or change what is the truth. And uh, I, I kept the middle for, for, for the end, the, the compute part, because when we speak about uh, storage, uh, of course, uh, blockchain is a distributed ledger technology. Uh, so it's a, also a way to store things. You know, you can store things in the blockchain. And basically, what you store is history of transaction and, uh, and many other information. But basically, that's what you store. But for me, and that was the big discovery when I started to, to, to analyze the Web3, what uh, the, the blockchain is, it's an execution platform. That's why you execute things. It, you execute something on the blockchain. So every node, as soon as they, they, they agree on what is the truth, will execute what is, what is supposed to be executed on, on the blockchain. So 
in a way, it's kind and uh, actually that's how on Ethereum it's called. It's called Ethereum virtual machine. So it's a virtual machine. A blockchain is a virtual machine where you execute some programs, and we'll see that will be distributed application. Okay. Then the notion of token. So on top of this uh, infrastructure storage network and uh, and storage, you have the notion, and that is the the, the big idea of uh, of Bitcoin and finally the blockchain is the notion of token, uh, because uh, we have a decentralized uh, network of uh, single independent nodes. Uh, we have to make sure how you 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 make sure that uh, they agree on what is the truth. What do you agree on what should be executed by all the nodes to create the next version of the truth? And that is called the consensus. So we have several ways or several protocols of uh, having a consensus between the nodes. I won't go into the details. It goes from proof of work to proof of stake. You might have heard about it. Some of them are very uh, energy consuming. Some of, some of them are, are different. This is not the point here. For me, what you have to, to, to remember here, it's there is a way and it's a protocol way. It's implemented in the in the blockchain. So it's a protocol for the nodes to uh, be okay and to agree on what is the truth. The other, the other and it's based on the use of token. In that case, the token uh, uh, is, is used, is a native token. That's what I, I call, uh, I put it here native tokens so basically that's the coins that the crypto money because that that part of the low level implementation of the blockchain uh, another use of token is the incentivization of the the nodes because uh, uh, as i said we have to bring back the the rules and the value of uh, of the exchange at protocol level that's what is the, what is done with the the token and the notion of fees so there is a, a mechanism it will depend on the the blockchain what what are the rules but that they are implemented in this low level uh, layers and then on top of that you have some uh, other protocol or you can say meta protocol that uh, optimize uh, those rules with uh, some trade-off that can be made on uh, performance, scalability, security, whatever, and that will make the difference, the different flavors between the different blockchain. But basically, at the at the end of the day, it's all about uh, how to bring trust and value at protocol level. And then you have several ways of doing it, but that's the that's the way uh, of the blockchain and the Bitcoin originally to uh, make sure that we re decentralize things, the value. Uh, and the value chain is at protocol level. Then, on top of this infrastructure level, then you have the application. And that's where we speak about uh, contract and smart contract. So, uh, contracts uh, and smart contracts are uh, basically, uh, it's an evolution of uh, the concept of contract between uh, several parties. Let's simplify, let's say, two, two parties, where you agree on the, what uh, each party is committed to do. And as soon as the contract is signed, you're supposed to uh, to respect the terms of the contract. That's exact same thing here. So, so except that the contracts are coded, that's why we say code is low. And basically, contracts are the application. It's the way to code and to execute code to execute the contract on the blockchain on the decentralized uh, infrastructure. Uh, and the execution, as soon as the the prerequisite of the contract are met automatically the smart contract will execute it itself without any central body having control on the, about uh, no we shouldn't uh, execute the contract uh, or that kind of stuff so no central control of that then on top of this layer so in a fractal way let's say on this layer you have another uh, sub layer on top of this one which again apply the same id of token and uh, incentivization you know, and um, decentralization. So it's basically the same concept. Use the token, but then so, it, so it means that you can create new tokens on top of the of the blockchain. It's different from the native token that on the underlying layer is token that you could yourself, but they they respect certain norm and standards. So that's why they call the uh, token of this type or this other type. We will see some of them, and basically you create token for speci specific usage. So basically for specific value. We saw that uh, the first value that was uh, uh, used by uh, by uh, by uh, on the blockchain was crypto money with Bitcoin, but it's only one usage of a, of a token. You can put any value you want on the token. For instance, that will create an NFT, but we'll see. 
and then when you when you code so there are specific languages depending on the on the which blockchain you consider like uh, solidity whatever uh, it's not important at this stage but basically you code your application the decentralized application uh, and you implement the business rule that you want that you wish and then uh, it, it creates a contract that uh, people who accept uh, the contract will sign really with cryptographic and heavy cryptogra cryptographic uh, mechanisms sometimes but as soon as everybody agree on the contract then the contract will be executed automatically when the conditions are met so some example of associated value and again uh, it's just to illustrate some of the usage but i don't want to go too much in usage because again i want to understand what is Web3 and what are the mechanisms? But just for you to illustrate that the concept of value, of course, can be uh, money and crypto money, but it can be also ownership. So basically, it's a certificate of ownership of something that's called an NFT. Uh, uh, and uh, it can even be applied to, to things that are not digital assets, like real assets. Like if you have a certificate of property of a, of a piece of land, uh, like in the real life, uh, it's just uh, the certificate of that. And then you can exchange that certificate in, in st instead of uh, moving the land. The land won't move, but you move the certificate. So you move the NFT from one wallet to another one. So I'm the new owner of this piece of land. Of, of course, NFT, the, the, the big... Uh, the big buzzword the other NFT was on uh, collectible NFT and generative art and that kind of stuff. But it's only one use case of uh, one sub use case of one use case of token that is NFT. Uh, other use case uh, is proof. So that's uh, basically NFT. You can't uh, exchange with anybody because it's uh, linked to, to who you are. That's why it's called a soul band uh, bound token coming from the gaming world. So basically, that will be your diploma. You won't exchange your diploma with anybody else. It's, it's, it's proof that you have the diploma. It can be many other things like security tokens, uh, uh, economic, uh, like company shares, for instance, or uh, even proof of, of the, 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 the wave of influence you have in a, in a certain community that will be called distributed autonomous organization. For instance, uh, uh, token uh, in D DAO uh, will represent the voting rights you, uh, you have in a, in a community and the rules of voting will be implemented by smart contract. Then uh, we're moving up the, the stack. Now we are in the, in the intermediate layer between the Web3 and the Web2. Uh, there are two options to use a decentralized system, basically. Uh, whether you, be, you are part of the system, so you create a node and you, you play the game of the, of the system. And it doesn't mean that you have to mine or, or do things, but you are still involved in all the execution. Remember, you extend the virtual machine of the, of the blockchain. All right, or the, the the storage capacity of the distributed uh, file system, for instance. Uh, or if you don't want to do that, uh, you can also delegate it to an access provider, just like we delegate access to internet. Instead of having an uh, access point in our in our company, we just uh, you know uh, delegate it to to somebody who will connect us to to the internet. That's basically the same thing. Uh, we 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 ask somebody to connect us to the decentralized system and uh, this access provider will run the node for you that's why uh, we speak about node as a service or uh, node virtualization any kind of word but the idea is you just have a node but it, it's run and exploited by somebody else uh, on your behalf and then as soon as you have a node then you can uh, access the decentralized system and the kind of uh, actor that you have uh, in those uh, in, in this area are poor players like Alchemy, maybe you heard about that, or Infuria, or lately you have also uh, 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 classical CSP who try to enter the game. So I'm speaking about, you, you understood, I speak about internet, about web uh, as a global network. I'm not speaking uh, in, my, in, my, in my talk about how to internalize a, a blockchain or do a DLT in a, in a company and that stuff. I'm speaking about the internet. Uh, and so uh, those companies like AWS or, or Google recently started to offer some, uh, some way to access also blockchain. So blockchain that, that will be private and run on uh, their own infrastructure. Okay, that's one way. Or to access uh, some of the blockchain, like for instance, Ethereum, Solana, or s some other ones that are known. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, as soon as you have the access, that's the physical, let's say, or well, physical, that's a low, low level access to the, the infrastructure. Then on top of that, you need some API. 
uh, to access directly the object and the, the network and the application that are deployed on the decentralized infrastructure. Uh, so we speak about Web3 API. Some of them are generic, uh, meaning like the kind of standard de facto or the being standardized. So there is a standard way to access a blockchain, uh, an account, uh, which is an address or, or identity on the on the on the blockchain, uh, to access the contract and then execute them. Uh, or uh, some of them are still specific. Uh, I think that, uh, for instance, the search how to search the uh, distributed uh, infrastructure will will become to be standardized in the in the coming months or, or years. For now, uh, you have projects like the graph. Uh, which is interesting because again you see how it go, uh, how it is done in uh, on on a decentralized uh, infrastructure the graph is interesting it's a project that in, is indexing a blockchain but in a decentralized way so they create their own token they have their own way of indexing in the decentralized way and to incentivize the people who do the decentralization and then you can request uh, with uh, something that looks like graphql Definitely, that's what uh, why the name, and uh, then you can uh, index and uh, and use uh, this uh, new uh, new service and new function on top of uh, the layer. So you see how it's built. Uh, you always put something on top, and basically they reuse the same concept of token and uh, incentivization and uh, decentralization at the end. Another another thing, uh, because we speak about how to access the blockchain, but how the blockchain can access the outside outside world. Uh, so it's called oracles, and basically it's just uh, pushing off-chain information. Look, off-chain is outside the chain, uh, so it's a way to to do, do to do push, but uh, from the smart contract. Then after the smart contract can access the the oracle and then information that uh, is in the outside world. Moving on, because I'm already late. Web3 web application. So yes, as I said, uh, there's nothing uh, speaking about presentation layer, how to interact with, uh, with uh, users in all uh, uh, that I presented yet, because we're basically in low level protocols. That's why I don't understand why it's called Web3 at the end of the day. Uh, so we still need the Web2 world and uh, for the front end to communicate, as I said, with the end users and uh, off-chain applications. Uh, so it doesn't replace uh, uh, Web3 doesn't replace Web2. And something that I put in the Web2 world uh, is the wallet. So it's a simplification because you could go into uh, very uh, expert debates on, uh, yeah, but this wallet is uh, is uh, is not on in this layer. It's, uh, it's a wallet that is executed as a smart contract. It's not in this layer. It's not important at this time. It's just uh, an illustration of uh, one uh, example of application that access the the the, the decentralized infrastructure and uh, is communicating with the outside world application or users. All right. And you have uh, many types of wallet like uh, secure storage, uh, I mean like uh, MetaMask, Ledger, Gnosis Safe. Gnosis is interesting because it's a wallet, uh, multi-user wallet, and there uh, appears the notion of uh, the autonomous di uh, distributed autonomous uh, organization because then you have to implement some rules about what are the rules for all the, the owner of the wallet to agree on the fact that we use the money that is in the wallet. And that's, that's the, that was, or that can be seen at the start of the EO, for instance, in a way. Let's move on. So as a summary, uh, you understood the I have a green and a, and a, and a blue uh, part in my in my uh, in my web3 map so uh, at, at the bottom you have decentralized infrastructure and decentralized application it's the web3 world which you should be called something else uh, it's basically decentralized protocol that are implemented hardcore in the blockchain or uh, via a smart contract to create new tokens and new rules of uh, interaction and uh, decentralization. All right. So we speak about consensus and uh, we speak about uh, code is low. And you have many usages like NFT, DAO, crypto uh, that uh, I, I rapidly uh, covered. And then on top of that, you enter the blue world because as soon as you uh, delegate the access to, to the decentralized infrastructure so to somebody, this somebody becomes to become uh, centralized. So Alchemy, Infuria, Google, that kind of stuff, they say, okay, don't bother uh, uh, creating a note and, and playing the game of the decentralized world, we'll do it for you. But then when you do that, uh, you centralize the access on the, and there, there, there were some, some, some polemics about uh, Infuria changing the rules on how you access stuff and la like that. And on top of that, you have the Web2 application as uh, we are used to do. 
So basically, you re-enter the centralized world. So basically, my point is, not everything yet, at least, and maybe never, will be decentralized. It's not like everything should be decentralized or everything should be uh, centralized. It's uh, what are we doing and in which uh, layer are we uh, positioning what we develop? Wrapping up uh, in two slides. Uh, so what is important to remember uh, at this stage in this very quick introduction to what uh, Web3 is for me? Uh, currency and value flow are part of the Web3 DNA. That's what make it so powerful and make it so visible and so polemic. All right. Uh, there's a lot of speculation and investment. As soon as you, you speak about money and value, uh, then people start uh, to speculate that that was the case with crypto and NFT. Maybe tomorrow we'll uh, invent a new type of token and people will start to, to speculate. But it's not a problem of the protocol, it's a problem of human beings that like to speculate. All right? uh, so bubbles like NFT and crypto, this generates a lot of intention. And what I like to say is uh, from uh, both kind of people, superheroes, who do the amazing thing, who become a billionaire in one week, that kind of stuff, or super villains who wants the same thing, but uh, the easy way, <laughs> you know? Uh, so nobody wants to miss the train, and you have a reaction of central bodies who say, oh, oh what's going on? I'm a bank, I'm used to centralized things. I'm a government, I'm, I'm used to centralized things. What is this, the autonomous uh, organization that you're trying to create, that kind of stuff? Or internet giant, you say, oh, what's going on here? Uh, so. Maybe Web3 could be the future of a decentralized in, in internet. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, what I know is uh, it could also collapse under the, the expectation we project on it. You know, Because basically, even if it's not that young, you see that uh, the, the layers are building on top of the other. You see identity. The concept of identity is, uh, is uh, even a fully philosophical uh, discussion right now. What is an identity? digital identity. So people are discussing a lot of stuff, trying to new project emerge in this area every every week now. Uh, and questions like, uh, I want my money's worth, uh, you're burning the planet, uh, show me a real use case. I mean, come on, we, we, we already know how to do that. We don't need to do the, that kind of mining stuff to, to implement that. Then if you focus too, too much on that, for sure, I think the blockchain won't, won't go that far. But, uh, the blockchain, sorry, the decentralized uh, system based on that on that token stuff. Uh, technology and use are not all mature. More are to come. People are very creative. That, that's why it's hard to follow, and that's why I propose a map to follow because uh, if not, we're lost. And it's a very dynamic and uh, ecosystem. So, and that's the end. Uh, will it be the next uh, iteration of the internet? I don't know. I know that there are other initiatives to re decentralize things. Uh, something that can be confusing called Web 3.0. This time it's really the web because it's by Tim Berners-Lee. So, uh, I mean, that's the guy who invented the web. So he knows what he's talking about. But he speaks about semantic web and solid. I don't go into details. It's just some pointers if you don't know them. Uh, you have some new concept that I discovered recently of Holochain. That sounds uh, crazy stuff. Uh, I'm planning to, to maybe dig, dig, deep dive in that and may maybe make a presentation of what the hell is a distributed hash map. <laughs> but uh, that's a new concept. Uh, or the Fediverse, uh, how to, uh, again, but you see al always it's the same idea, is how to create new protocols, how to ensure an, uh, interoperability, because it's, it's what it's all about. How to interoperate and how to make sure that uh, we stay decentralized. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. 40 minutes was kind of a challenge. No question, but maybe outside. And I hope you remember a few things from uh, what I tried to share with you. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to sell what, uh, what is the blockchain. I think it might not survive, but some of the concepts uh, might be interesting in the future. Thank you very much.